Hello, Trey. Hello. How's it going, Esteban? Everything is fine. How are you? Good. The first thing that I want to ask you is, what makes a good photograph for you? Ah, uh, what what makes a good photograph? Mm. Well, uh, uh, mm. I think you know um, this is sort of like counterintuitive, but I think that like a good photo is a photo that confuses people, like that they're not sure exactly what they're saying because you know nowadays we we look at we look at photos so much like we just like scroll through instagram or facebook and we see photos and like literally as to one have like one second or even half a second we get it like i get it okay i understand and you go to the next photo right mm -hmm. and i i notice that the ones that i i watch for a long time by a long time, I mean like five seconds, which is a long time nowadays, or even 10 seconds or 20 seconds. Those are the ones that confuse me. I'm like, what, what, what's going on here? I, I don't quite understand. Uh, so yeah, that's, the, the thing is like, like phones are so good at like, you can just like, everything becomes like so literal when you take a photo with a phone or a camera. So to kind of unravel that, and uh, break it down into something else. Uh, you know, my favorite uh, painter, uh, Renoir, he, he would always engineer like little mistakes and mysteries into his paintings. Um, because like in those little mysteries, um, that's where the viewer gets connected to them. Have you worked with editorial world, magazines, or something like um this is an easy answer uh no i haven't why why you decided not to work with the editorial world um well i i've uh it's it is a bit of an active choice i guess and it's the same choice as not choosing to work with uh clients i might do like one commissioned work every year uh but like um and there's nothing wrong with working for clients or for magazines there's nothing wrong with it at all uh but like i don't, I don't do like wedding photos or kid photos or like there's normal ways that photographers make money and there's nothing wrong with that i kind of actively chose not to do that because then you have to like divide up your day into making money like for a magazine or for a wedding or like for a kid photography or like take photos of dogs or like well i don't know like the normal ways photographers make money and there's there's nothing wrong with that like i always give this advice to new photographers and it's a terrible advice really uh i i say like like don't don't do any of that uh, because then then you end up like well let, let's say in a day oh you, you have a day right and uh you're awake for like 16 hours okay let's say let's just like say you're awake for 16 hours and you sleep for eight hours like hopefully right um, these are round numbers and dur during those 16 hours you have like 100 cycles, like 100 cycles of like brain power. You have like 100 things you can do in a day, right? Okay, so you have 100 cycles. So then you have to choose like, how am I gonna spend these 100 cycles? Am I going to use them to create work for clients? Mm -hmm. um, maybe I might have to use like 40 cycles for that. Uh, and then maybe you have to get new clients down the road, right? So that you've got some, you know, you have more torpedoes in the, in the tube, right? So that might, that might take like another 30 cycles. And then you have like, you know, uh, 30 spare cycles to do what you really want to do. You feel a little guilty, like, oh, maybe I should be getting some new clients or maybe I should be doing more work for this magazine or that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I, 
Oh my, I have so much stuff to say about stuff. Like, especially the magazines. It's so, uh, like, photography magazines, they're, they're only, <laughs> the only people that read these things are other photographers. That's not really your, <laughs> like, who cares? Like, people try so hard to impress other photographers. Who cares what they think, right? Your, your audience is, is other, other, other people. People, like photographers, I've noticed that they have so much, uh, they're so concerned about um, uh, worrying about what other photographers think about them. But it's the same way in any industry. Is it like in real estate, like in, yep. in Queenstown, New Zealand, where I, I live, right? They, like real estate people, they're only worried about what other real estate people real think system. about them. Well, whatever the industry is. And, but like me, so I, I'm completely independent. I, like when I went to your website and I saw all these incredible photos that were there, like I scrolled through every one of them and they're, they're so beautiful and you're such a beautiful visual storyteller. Like I see, I see these things and like they make me cry inside. They're so beautiful. Um, so I, you know, I, um, yeah, anyway, I, I don't even know what I'm saying, but like, I, uh, I, I make stuff for me and I can see when I go to your website that you're making stuff for you and I get it. I get it. Like you're, you don't see like, because that's something that usually photographers, when they're starting, when they're beginners, they usually think, and it's like, oh, I need to get uh, related with editors and start working with magazines or newspapers so I can get published and then I will become famous and somehow I will make it a way of living. But uh, reality is that sometimes photographers who are paid by all this editorial world they don't get enough mm -hmm. money to live in so that's that's why i love that you have this perspective about it because it's also a good advice it's like another choice you know and i am pretty sure that some photographer that will watch this interview they will say like wow there is another way to do it and the, you know it's 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 told yeah. by a photographer who has a lot of experience because I think you have been in in around uh, doing photography for more than fifteen years now, right? Mm. Am I wrong? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's actually like, I didn't even I didn't get my first camera until I was uh, like thirty five, and now I'm a ripe old forty nine. I know it's amazing. <laughs> I don't look forty nine. I look so young and fresh, <laughs> but it's true. I am forty nine. <laughs> That's great about about the editorial world. So I want to introduce uh, something about social media that I heard that you said in an interview in 2013. Mm -hmm. In 2013, you said that uh, comments and likes were not so important. Especially, you were not talking about Instagram, but you were talking about uh, Facebook and Google Plus. And mm -hmm. you mentioned like it was not so important to have so many likes because people in general, they, ha they don't have enough time to go and like and especially write a comment for, for your picture. So you were advising something like even if people um, doesn't write anything, it doesn't mean that your work is not good. Uh, what do you think about it like seven years later? Yeah. Yeah. I, I have... Um uh, matured even more in these thoughts that like locks li likes and comments do not matter. Uh, I know it's like this, it's weird. Cause it's like this big, like public scoreboard. And I'm not saying that I am like superior in any way, but like I am, I'm not ego driven. There, there's this, people have this identity about themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. And they, the story they tell about themselves. If people read things like Eckhart Tolle or, and they'll, they'll put up a photo and uh, they, they over stress, like how, how many likes uh, and how many comments they get as if that will feed the story that they tell themselves. Mm -hmm. I, the, I think the greatest thing that an, any artist can do is to completely like let go of themselves. And then you can channel all the actual energy from, from the universe. And so what, what happens, it's like Instagram is like, it really fucks with people's heads, right? People that aren't free, people that don't have this, this freedom, um, that don't take themselves seriously, that just are in the flow, in a flow state, like a, like a dolphin that 
swims in the waves. And so Instagram and Facebook, all social media, they, there's this huge public scoreboard of how many likes and comments you get. So people, um, they're comparing themselves with other people all the time, which is uh, ter terrible. Like just all, all you have to do as a human is to like compare yourself to how you were the day before, like maybe you're a little bit of a better person the next day. That That's all you have to do, right? Don't compare yourself to other people. But like, there's this, there's these heuristics, these numbers that everyone sees all the time. And so that will encourage people to take photos or like create artwork that will try to maximize likes and comments. I, here's a really good example of something that I, I didn't fall into. And I'm not saying anything bad about people that do this, right? I'm very accepting. I'm very accepting of everyone, wherever they are on their path to, to consciousness. Pe people that are in it, they'll understand what, what I'm saying. Uh, but like, like there's this basic thing. Like if you, if you put yourself in the photo, like, like a selfie, uh, or like you're standing on top of a mountain and you have your, your hands like up like this, like say like, Oh, I've, I've arrived. Like I, here I am, uh, or whatever, you know, those, those kind of photos, they statistically, they get like 30% more likes and comments than anyone else or, or any other kind of photo. So if you put yourself in a photo or put your arms up or like you say something, like meaningful, like you're having some like moment or something and you don't even mean it, but you're just, you're saying it and you're posting these photos just to get likes and comments. It's so empty. It's just like meaningless and it's bad because it, it feeds the ego, which is an illusion. And it even worse than feeding your own identity, it encourages other people to do it because then other people are like, Oh, I, well, like, I, I like landscape photos, right? And so, but I never put myself in the landscape photo, even though I know if I was in the landscape photo, if I'm just there just hanging out, you know, I don't have to put my arms up like some kind of jackass or whatever. Like, even if I'm just hanging out in the photo, I know I'll get 30% more likes. But it's, it's, so, it's so needy and empty. And it encourages other people to have that emptiness and neediness. Like you, it, it, there's this weird thing, like you have to be uh, acknowledged by other people to know that you exist, but you're already a complete human. You're fine just the way you are. You're beautiful the way you are. You, you, don't, need, you don't need to like manipulate social media uh, so that other people can tell you how wonderful you are. That's sad. And I have I have seen it many times. I I remember one time I traveled with a I I had a travel a trip with with an influencer, a really big influencer, uh, and you know I could notice how he was all day struggling how to make the best pose or how to show that he was absolutely happy just for the picture. It 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 he didn't even care if it was with good camera or cell phone or whatever he just wanted to have this picture to post it immediately uh so he can have a lot of likes but he was not enjoying the trip itself and i was like wow but we will go into influencers later i i just i just want to know uh about the i want to ask you about what strategy would you recommend today for people to show their work, like not only maybe to grow social media, because we are saying in somehow that numbers are not important to say that your photography work, it's, it's important or relevant to the world. But if I'm a photographer and I want to show the world my work, how can you suggest after all the experience that you have uh, to do it in 2020? Uh, yeah, I think, my advice, which this, this is my advice. I don't even do it myself that much. I, sh I sh should follow my own advice, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it, it, in a way, like I, I've reached a point, and I, I'm not saying this in a self-important way at all. Because I, like I said, I don't take myself seriously at all. Like I, I, don't, I don't care what people say online, right? 
But my goal, uh, my modus operandi, my raison d'etre, like why, I, I think it's good. I think it is good to have some kind of core thing that's beyond the photography, right? My, my core thing is to, um, is to spread love and consciousness and just to basically explain to people to be kind and to love the earth and to spread consciousness. And I, I happen to do that through photos. Uh, and then, so, so that's kind of the core, like I think it's good to have a core thing that has nothing to do with photography, right? Nothing to do with, and then when you do share a photo, um, it's good to tell a story, right? And like, I, I learned this when I was, I gave this talk at uh, uh, EG, which is kind of like uh, TED, like TED Talks, the um, entertainment gathering. And I, I met this incredible guy. Oh God, he's so amazing. His name is Steven Toblowski. Uh, you might remember it more like people that watch this, they may remember him uh, from a movie he was in. Uh, uh, what, oh God, what was it? Now I forgot the name of it. I don't know how. The, uh, the Bill Murray movie where he repeats every day over and over again. What's yeah, yeah. Um, it's, I, I don't remember, but I, I know when. You forgot it too. It just, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, people, whatever it is. Uh, so he's, he's the guy. He walked up and he's like the insurance salesman and he has all yep. the glasses and his name is Ned Needlemeyer or something. And every day he, he's, so that's the guy. So at this conference I could go to, he always opens every conference and he has this 18 minute talk and he's this incredible rock on tour where he, he tells these stories and everyone is enraptured. They hear the story and it's so beautiful. It's funny. It's light. And then at the end of his stories, everyone is just like crying. The entire auditorium is crying. I, mm -hmm. I cry all the time. And it's this beautiful cry, which I call a, like a, a Pixar cry, right? Would, you know, at the end of a Pixar movie, you just cry because it's, it's so beautiful. So then it, it turned out that he went to my same university and we were both speaking there. So at, at these conferences, you have these little breakout sessions, right? Where, uh, you know, you go have a shrimp cocktail or whatever. And so I saw him, I'm like, Steven, you're, you're such an incredible storyteller. Like I, Everyone is enraptured. Everyone is on tender hooks. We're all listening to every tiny morsel of what you say. I was like, how do you, how do you do it? And then he like locked eyes with me. You know, every now and then you lock, you lock eyes with somebody and they're like, let's talk. Like you and I are going to have a discussion. I was like, oh, okay. And so, so then he, he took me into a room and he goes, Trey, I'm going to tell you everything about storytelling. And that's by the way, that's, that's the point of, I'm trying to get to your answer, which mm -hmm. is storytelling is the key, right? Um, and so he, he pulled me into this room and he told me these, um, all these steps of storytelling where you have, uh, like anyone can do it. I always thought that like stories or storytelling was something that other people did, right? It was like other people are storytellers. I didn't realize it's a skill that you can, you can learn yourself. I mean, you know this. I know you know this because I've seen your photos and I've seen what you've written. And this. But I'm saying this like for the benefit of I'm not saying this for you because you know it. I'm just saying for the benefit, benefit of other people. So like a story has a, a beginning and a middle and an end. So act one is when, I'll just give you the short version of what he said, even though this sounds extremely like a long answer, but I'll, I'll try to keep it concise. Okay, so act one is uh, the beginning. And you get people into it with things that they might uh, understand or something that they, they can grip. Like I used to sit behind mm, a girl uh, when I was in fifth grade and she had this long black ponytail. And I always thought about taking the long black ponytail and like dipping it into my inkwell, right? So it's a, it's, a, it's a little thing that people can picture, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. most people are visual, especially people that look at Instagram. It's a very visual world. 
So they see that now they're in, they're into the story. Okay. And then, then act two, you, you get out of the physical things that people think about touching and feeling and you get into emotions and you say like, well, okay. So then act two is where you start to get into the emotions and feelings and things. And, uh, so it might be like, well, this, this girl that I, I liked with her, with her ponytail, we would kind of walk home together and, um, and I like really wanted to hold her hand and, and, uh, like our hands would brush against each other. And like, I was just, I was so scared. And then one time I just decided to, to grab her hand grab her. and be bold, and just hold her hand. And then it was so beautiful because she didn't, she didn't let go. In fact, she like, she squeezed my hand. So when you tell these stories, now people are into it. They're like, Oh, that's cool. Like, and then what's going to happen next? So and then act two is like, Oh, you know, there's ups and downs and, uh, you might have a little breakup, but you get back together. There's just stuff that goes on or whatever. And then you get to act three where you're, you're married or you decide to commit to each other or whatever. And then uh, you have kids and blah, blah, blah. And then you, you do this one. And it, this is a trick, but it works. It's a beautiful trick is that, after you talk about all this stuff at the end of act three, like you just love her so much. And you, you say like, ah, oh, like I'm so happy. I never dipped her, ha- her, her ponytail yeah. into the ink. Wall. So there's this little callback. So the, the end of the story makes a little reference to the beginning of the story. Mm-hmm. And like, people are like, Oh, that's so cool. So, but we could do that with, with photos, right? You do that with photo. So when you put up a photo, that that's oh god, this is a super long answer. I try to keep it short, but like you get it, you get an opportunity to tell a story, and just you should make it way more concise than I just made it. But just have a beginning and a middle and an end, because the thing is that human, no matter how amazing your photo is, you could have the best fucking photo in the world, like, but it has to be attached to a story, and. Uh, yeah, so practice with storytelling and you you can hold people's hearts the way that other people's can uh, other people can. Okay, okay. That that drives me that thank you for that answer. I think it's really important especially when we are considering like um creating series or creating single images. So that drives me to the point to ask you what do you think like photographers should really create like single images or they should also work for series because sometimes they feel like creating one single picture is so complicated that how how can i create like a whole series to tell the whole story as you were explaining so what would you recommend about this Mm. well i well hmm, that's a good question let me think about that um i think don't worry well, we, one thing is, um, I would revert to my earlier comment of like, stop trying to impress other photographers mm-hmm. because, uh, like, you know, it's, it's, it's this in photographers are these, it's this incestuous thing. I don't know if you've ever seen like snakes having sex, but the, there's like, 10 snakes and they're all just like in this cuddle puddle. Right. And that's how photographers, so that's how photographers are. They're always trying to impress other photographers and you can always, I notice that photographers tend to post photos that are uh, either like a little nerdy or geeky where they, they talk about their lens and like nobody care. The only people that care about this are the photographers, right? That's not your audience. Uh, so don't, you, you can put a series of photos and have a theme and tell stories. But I like, I urge people like not to try to impress other photographers, like the non photographers, I call them muggles, like mm-hmm. not in a bad way, but the muggles, like that's your audience is the muggles. They, they don't care what lens you have. They, and a lot of times I notice people might, 
photographers might post like a series of photos that are all kind of around the same theme, you know, like multiple angles of the same thing or whatever, but that it becomes too, um, too literal. Like you, you don't want to see too much of the process. You just kind of want to see the final thing and, and uh, hear a good story about it. Mm-hmm.